everyone. Welcome back to Walker Vibes. I'm Orlando. And I am Brandon. This is Denzel. And this is Samantha. We're super excited to be here another week. We're glad you guys are tuning in. Let's talk about this episode. This episode was awesome. Some really cool things happened. Some different things happened. Yes. Um, which is cool. Uh, I felt like overall this episode, again, like I said last week, set the premise. This episode really got the ball rolling with things. Like Sasha, like... Oh my god. Yeah. What was she doing? What do you think, Brandon? Like, what was she doing? I don't know what she was doing. She was, uh... I'm trying, trying to think of what I want to say first. She was... She definitely seemed... It seemed that Bob and Tyrese definitely took a huge toll on her this episode. It, it was, um... It kind of goes along with, uh... uh a few things, but tiredness is one of them. She's just almost ready to give up. She... It seems as if she doesn't care anymore. She's being really reckless, really careless. Uh, she's all over the place. She almost got the group uh, killed or, or in danger, you know, when they were just trying to toss the zombies yeah. aside in the beginning. So uh, yeah, that's, the, that's the, whole, the beginning. The whole group was just overall tired. Like, their plan to get those walkers to get those walkers out of the way was literally them moving out of the way, them falling into the river or whatever it was there. I thought that was, I thought that was crazy. Like... They're saving their energy, but they're getting the walkers, maybe not dead, but they're getting them out of the way. Um, Sasha went, you know, boss to the wall, straight up, knife to the head, almost got Michonne killed. She yes. almost stabbed her. That was insane. She's, and then that look. She that was look. like, she's like, don't touch me, Michonne. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, she was going at Abraham, too. She cut him a little bit. Yeah, she cut him. Yeah, she was just reckless. She had tunnel vision, I felt. She just wanted to get those zombies out of the way. Release some aggression. Didn't Definitely. care how. <clears throat> yeah. She kind of reminded me of Tyrese um, after Karen died. He was, she was just kind of... Yeah. Tunnel yeah. vision, just wanted to kill a ton of walkers. Actually, there was a quote that Mo Michonne had told to Tyrese after Karen died. She said, um, angry makes you stupid, and stupid gets you killed. Mm. So she's definitely being pretty reckless, and I think she might get herself killed and maybe some other people in the group as well. And back with what Michonne was, <clears throat> was telling her, um, you know, she's all like her brother. That's from what I understood. And she said, no, I'm not, I'm nothing like him. And there you go. Like, Michonne is... Pretty much Michonne is being to Sasha what Sasha was to Tyrese after that happened. Hashtag like brother, like sister. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think she was trying to overcompensate for, you know, like how Tyrese was when he died. He wasn't really aware of his environment. And I think she's overcompensating for wanting to basically run at anything in her path, which is being really destructive, so... I don't I don't know if I don't think she's processed enough to to kind of have that thought process. I don't know. I don't think she's really thinking about overcompensating or being more cautious. I just think she's angry. She's just seeing red. Mm. Yeah, sure. she's she's going all in. Um she wasn't thinking. She didn't go with a plan. And definitely like she's in the same mindset right right now as uh Daryl and Maggie. Definitely. You know, after after Beth died, Maggie's definitely distraught. Um, the episode started with her behind the behind the tree, just looking into what, like looking down, didn't know what she was doing, and it was bad. It was pretty bad. And and Beth's death took a huge toll on Daryl as well. Oh yeah. And um, that was definitely a big thing. Um, when when he went to the woods, actually, when he was uh, just by himself and he was and he was smoking, uh, he burned himself with a cigarette. Uh, which is kind of crazy. And yeah. I, he was numb. It, I got that in, yeah. as him being numb to pain. And and he was kind of. It was almost as if he was doing it like to see if he could even feel anything anymore. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was like like what is going on? I I don't even know if I want to continue anymore. And those three people that you just named, Maggie, Sasha, Daryl, um, they all have a similar mindset in a few different ways. I think. And it was, um, and those three actually they they, they were shining in a couple areas. One scene when it was when it started raining. And uh, everyone was like, oh my god, it's raining, you know, there's like, there's water and everything, and it's those three, you know, they didn't smile at all, mm -hmm. they kept standing, they didn't, like, embrace the rain, it was as if they were still just like, that's cool, like, it doesn't matter, because I still want to give up. But then, to, to, like, the polar opposite of that happened after, when the zombies actually came to the barn, and, you know, I was, I was just talking to you guys about this, it seemed as if they could have easily just been like, the zombies are here, let's give up. You know, not even thought about anybody else. Just like this is the end for me. But those are the three. Ground. Yeah, but those are the three people that stood up, and they were actually the ones that were like, "I'm not ready to give up. I, I still want to keep going." So it's as if as the episode progressed, maybe their mindset changed a little bit. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? 
So yeah, like I agree with you. Um, they they're in the mindset right now, like oh my god, I just lost someone. Like, what else is left? What am I gonna do? But they know that they have to fight for each other, even just for themselves. Um, for one, I felt like they couldn't go to sleep. They just had way too much on their mind. They couldn't go to bed. They're, they're sleeping in a barn. And crazy storm going on, and then I don't I don't remember. Daryl had his head stuck stuck out of the barn. What was he What was he awake for? Like what was he? Do you guys remember? Oh no, he could have just been just awake to be awake. Yeah, he was. They're just hungry. They're watch. frustrated. Yeah, look out. yeah, and they came out of nowhere. Oh yeah, definitely from out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> they come from. They came from out of nowhere, and he, him holding the door, and then I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when everyone started going up, when Abraham came to to like hold the door, like I felt like that was the okay. Now we got it because he really pushed the door and he really like. Slammed it. That was such yeah, an symbolic. intense scene. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Like it was just so flashy and like it was so dramatic. It was very intense. Yeah. It was a lot on the eyes. A lot of visual. Definitely. <laughs> visual. And then when Judith came to help, <laughs> <laughs> what was she doing? She was just laying there, dude. No, Carl. She's no there worries. in spirit, guys. In spirit. In Hashtag spirit. no worries. Just laying there, <laughs> pooping my diaper. <laughs> Do you guys think she has diapers? Have they found diapers? I no. There's cloth diapers. That's got to be some crazy, like, rash. There's got to be a poop hole in those pants that she wears. <laughs> Where's it going? <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. So going back to the three main people that we thought really sort of shined in this episode, what would you guys have done if you were in Maggie's position and you found that walker in the trunk? I feel like she went through so mm. much. She was willing to shoot, like, and just attract all these walkers just to put this one out of despair i wouldn't really even call it despair because they're dead they don't have feelings yeah but uh i i feel like i understood where where maggie was coming from as far as trying to kill that walker it was just it just seemed like such an unfortunate situation like she opens the trunk she sees this this walker that's tied up probably kidnapped you know like who knows what's running through her mind at that point but you know she probably was just like oh like actually you know what now that i think about it she might compare that walker to uh, to Beth. Beth was kidnapped by that group, and you know. Oh, there you go. Maybe she maybe she's thinking about oh, what if this was Beth? Like you know, Ooh, I I'd didn't want think to kind of take her out of her misery. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. We also actually, I tried to even answer your question. I was ready to jump onto another topic. So, I would have so I would have killed a walker um, if I was in her position. Maybe not because I just want to put it out of, out of its misery. If anything, if I was Maggie, I'd be like, I hate these walkers. My family is dead, all because of them. If the, if her staying in the trunk, you know, undead, then, you know, like, if that if her staying in the trunk is so bad, then let her, let her stay there. You know what I mean? Why put her out of her misery? But I would have put her out just because I feel like if someone else went to open the trunk, I would feel bad if something happened to that person and it was my fault because I didn't kill the, the last walker that I saw. Well, that's that, just me. That might have been your mindset, but I, I highly doubt she was yeah, thinking well, about mean, anyone else. Yeah, I'm just curious. You said, uh, like, you hate she would hate walkers because the walkers killed the family. The two biggest people in her life were killed by other humans. Herschel was killed by the governor, and but the whole, was, okay, yeah, you're right. So, <clears throat> governor killed Herschel, and the officer killed. Why Beth. am I forgetting her name? Killed Beth. But but, the, but the whole but but the whole scenario it's because of the walkers. If the walkers weren't there, nothing would have happened. You know what I mean? Like I know it's like something weird and cheesy to say, but if it that's if it were me, I think that I would have killed the walker also, and I probably would have done it because it would just. I feel like I would be at that point where it's just almost a reaction, um, where I wouldn't have to think about it just mm -hmm. because. It's like, oh, like, this is the enemy, you know, the walkers, especially if it's tied down. If it's tied down, it's just almost easy, um, unless you're still clinging to, you know, the idea that they're real people, you know, and you're not ready to kill them. But Maggie has killed so many, it's, it, it, you know, I feel like it, if it were me, it would have just been like, okay, dead, on to the next one. Yeah. I mean, now that we're talking about uh, Sasha and Maggie, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there was some different interactions in this episode some not so usual interactions um sasha was talking to abraham they had like a real conversation they usually they usually don't have conversation like that carl and maggie when he brought her the the music box glenn and daryl daryl and maggie 
they really don't have too much conversation. Um, and Sasha and Michonne, they really again they don't sit down and they're not they're not super friendly. The fir- and the first real conversation they really had is is conflict right now. I feel like I don't know that could that mean something? All these people that don't normally talk to each other, they're now they're talking to each other more often. What do you guys think? I don't like I I see what you mean, but it's because that with each episode and season, we kind of like group them together because there's always those people that are always together, and I think it's just it's just trying to like. I think it's trying to throw a point across that, like, now everyone's together and, like, they're in this together. So, I guess those interactions just sort of, like, tie that, you know. Trying to, like, solidify that they're a family. more. Yeah, yeah. So, they're all together. Which is awesome because um, there was actually a point where um, Maggie was talking. And I'm not sure who she was talking to. But she said, oh, she was talking to Glenn. Um, And uh, I believe the quote was... um, before I thought that this was the dark part, um, and now I don't know if I want to fight it anymore. And she uh, she had thought of this whole you know zombie apocalypse as as the dark part, and now she just she's like I said she's so tired, um, just like a few other people are. But I feel like we're kind of now entering the dark part. I feel like now is the time to really show who your true friends and family are. Um, the the Earth is changing. Like we've seen so many different to- uh, times in this episode where. Um, it's almost as if it, you're running out of resources. You know, we yeah. saw that the frogs um, that it seemed like there there used to be a pond there, the, the water it, it's gone. You know, it's dry. We saw that you know there was an animal that um, Daryl had seen and, and it had already been eaten or infected. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's it, the resources are getting more and more scarce. Um, the the people are dying off. You know, there's going to be less people in the world now. It's really the time. It's it's as if it's the darkest part now. Now we're heading into the area where there's so much. There's so little left. Yeah, I think, um, you know, to your point of how, how little there is left and kind of even what we were talking about with the barn, this episode seems to reinforce the idea that the group needs to stay together more now than ever. Um, kind of one of the, the quotes that I remember Glenn saying to Daryl was that uh, we can make it together, but we can only make it together, meaning they have mm-hmm. to they have to fight with each other. They can't, you know, one part of the group can't give up. Everybody has to be on the same page. Everybody has to fight. Everybody's got to help each other out and pull each other up. Definitely, I definitely agree with you. Um, let's let's change pace a little bit. Let's talk about the name drop. <laughs> so this is the first time ever in the Walking Dead series and in, in the episodes in the show series that they actually use the words "the Walking Dead." Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! And I don't know, like it was random. I didn't expect it. Yeah, it was from out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> they all they were all together. Um, Rick was saying how. You must accept that that you can die. You can must get over that fear and do what you have to do before you can continue. And he said it. You know, we are the Walking Dead. What do you guys think? It was like a live every day like it's your last kind of thing. Because he was, you know, telling that story mm. about. I believe it's his grandfather, right? Yeah. It was, it was his grandfather, and um, I just it really suited you know the conversation, um, and it blew my mind. Definitely, I. I see it this way. I think it's going to be a complete change of pace in the, in, in, this, in, the, in the show. Oh, yeah. You can already see it. Like, it's... I think by having that name drop, it's like that's a pivot point right there. Like, expect some crazier stuff, some new stuff. We met a, a new character who we'll talk about in a bit. But it was definitely definitely something pivotal. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think it's kind of a way for them to kind of draw back, like pivot back over to the comic book side of things. Even, um, even that mysterious character that we saw at the end I think might have a, a huge part to do with the comic book and some things that are going next but um but yeah yeah I mean like what was his name Aaron yeah yeah, yeah I, I'm not again I'm not I don't read the comics maybe as much as I should I'm just breaking through like I don't know the fourth comic I don't know it's pretty bad not a real friend <laughs> but yeah his name it Fans was Aaron shapes and sizes guys <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about Aaron. He was a smooth talker. Like, he definitely knew how to get in there and and just kind of ease his way in. He knew they were going to be hostile. He, you know, at this point in the show, you have to expect that. And then the music box playing, you know, from out of nowhere. Like, that was, <laughs> that was pretty weird. I don't know. Talking about easing your way in, he one, he knows Rick's name somehow. <laughs> 
And two, he refers to him as a, himself as a friend. As a friend. So, yeah. why do you know. think he refers to himself as a you know as a friend? Why do you think he says that? I, Def. Uh, <laughs> no, you can go. <laughs> um, it's it's definitely just to try and ease them. Uh, it's it's you know he's not going to be like, oh hey, I'm your enemy, and uh, <laughs> well, true. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm here to kill you. Um, what's next? <laughs> um, yeah, I think it was just to ease them, and I I think he's. I mean, you know, I'm not. I don't really like talking about the preview, but you know, there was that little 30 second preview, and it's like he's he's got probably a whole lot of surveillance or something going on where he, you know him and whoever he's probably with has had cameras or whether it's word of mouth or whatever. It's probably just knows a whole lot about the group, and it, again, especially just knowing Rick's name, it's like, okay, we're not famous or anything. That's kind of <laughs> weird. I think I want to see. I want to see if Rick is consistent with with his three questions. So what are what are his three questions? Number one, how, how many, many walkers, walkers have you killed? killed? Number two, number two, how many people have you killed? <laughs> and number three, why? Why? Yes. Why? So, I know it doesn't seem like it's huge a huge factor, but that's important to me. Those little anymore. details are super important to me. Yeah. I want to see if he's consistent. You know, because at this point, I don't feel like they should be letting a lot more people in. I don't know. But also on the flip <clears throat> side of things, they have nothing. They barely have anything to drink. They need to keep Judas, you know, they need to keep her in mind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, go ahead. So, one thing that you said that um, kind of draw attention to, you said that, like, they're not as willing to draw people into their group. But what do you, what if Aaron's actually trying to draw that group into his larger group? Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> also, as far but as... you can't, in their position, they can't give people the benefit of the doubt anymore. They oh, can't. Absolutely. They can't say, well, this guy has good intentions. Yeah. Everyone's going to have malicious intentions, and you have to prepare for the worst. You know, I would tie that guy up, question him. I would treat him like hell. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I think Aaron has a pretty good understanding of the fact that the group is not going to trust him. I mean, obviously, he did his surveillance. That's probably, probably why he left the uh, water on the side of the road and didn't actually come out and say, like, hey, guys, like we have water for you. He has an understanding of what, what this group is all about. I think his kind of what Rick Rick's thing is about asking the three questions. I think that group might be have a different side of it where they just do surveillance on people. They get an understanding of what they're all about, and they're like, "Oh, okay. Well, this is you know these people are good. Let's try to reach out to them." So I don't. Know, I think I actually think Aaron might be good. Um, yeah. Uh, I think he's a sign of hope. You know. Yeah, definitely. I would like to think that just the way that he introduced himself. Like, hi, I'm a friend. I've been spying on you guys. I know your leader's name. Here's some water. He was pretty smooth. I mean, yeah, but he has like, to be he from a bigger... Like, like, hello. <laughs> he he has like to be butter. from a bigger group. <laughs> like, there's no way he's surviving like that on his own. So it's going to be really interesting to see when those two parties, you know, meet each other or fight he's each other. He's sneaky, dude. Like, they snuck the water in the road. I don't know if it was them. It could be them. Maybe not. They turned on the music box. I think it was them. Uh, what well, the music they box? They did not they're, turn they're on not the magic. music box. So, <laughs> so why would? So it's a coincidence. It's a complete. Like coincidence. I said, he's a sign of hope. I think like I, he's clean. Oh, okay, Some yeah. Talker yeah. like the the music box came on, boom. Like I think that's a sign of hope. We've we, who have we found though? I'm sorry. Who who has the group found that they're always they always had good intentions? Other than who are they who they're with now? Judith. <laughs> I mean, you can't really say that other than who they've been with well, now, true. because that this group has always added on more people. Like mm -hmm. the obviously, you know, if you think about the the group from the very beginning, I guess it was Rick by himself, and then he jumped on with Morgan and his son, and so on and so forth. So the same people from day one are not the same people from now. So you can't think of it that way. Like everyone necessarily has bad intentions. But at this point, they've come across <laughs> people with more malicious intentions than absolutely. They have people who absolutely have, yeah. have had good intentions. But. This could also be the turning point. This could be an area. Um, I definitely think it was a huge coincidence, but it was also just kind of uh, trying to let us know uh, through another object, the music box, how it just it wouldn't work, you know. And it was given it was given to Maggie earlier on in the episode, and then boom, right at the end, right when he shows up, for no reason, it finally works. That's definitely just trying to tell us something. Yeah, it's a sign of hope. Yeah, and I, I, I do. Right. Hopefully, you know, hopefully it is a good thing that he's there, but. I mean, as we've seen with all the other people, <clears throat> the governor, uh, no, some people don't have good intentions. Absolutely. Who do you guys think is, is helping him, if there is anyone helping him? Oh, there's definitely someone. We, I mean, I don't yeah. think we, we would know or should know. I think he's being helped by people. 
Do you think it's a <laughs> do you think it's a giant group together who have established something? Oh yeah. I think it's a pretty decent sized group. Yeah. It's gotta be. He was so clean and dapper, you know? <laughs> like yeah, the I'm governor. There. He was smooth. <laughs> you think he's using hair gel still? Did he have any hair? Oh my goodness. Dude, it would suck if I didn't have any hair gel in the apocalypse. <laughs> what? It would nope. suck. We I... know who will be the first to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. so Aaron was definitely a good drop. the The name drop, you know, The Walking Dead, like that. W- that was nuts. That was definitely something really, really big. This episode, I keep going back to that. But yeah, I think that another another thing that we can focus on is actually um, the priest. We we haven't really talked about him, but I think that he was another big part of this episode in terms of you know the tiredness, the 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 feeling of giving up um he was he was definitely another role um earlier in the episode you could see how hot he was and and you know just just how tired he was but he wasn't gonna remove his his uh his collar he he just ke- he kept going through it you know he's sticking to his faith and everything um i really don't care for that character anymore at this point he's like i sometimes even forget he's there Everybody serves a purpose. Yeah. yeah, but I'm like, oh, yeah, Father Gabriel's there. Okay, cool. I can't wait for him to get super important and just, you're going to be like, oh, I I guess I didn't forget about him. Let's just keep him there so if people <laughs> die, he can, like, have a few words to say. I feel like if he becomes important, he becomes important in the same way Eugene would. Like, they're both the, the cowards of the group in a sense. Like, I don't yeah. know. Maybe they'll have their redemption at some point. But, yeah, I mean, back to the priest, it was... Through, you know, in the beginning of the episode, he had his, his, his collar on tight and everything, and he was just sticking to his faith and making sure that he, you know, tried to stay strong the whole time, and no matter how hot he was or how tired he was, and he actually had a conversation with Maggie in which um, I feel like kind of opened his eyes a little bit, or, or at least just made him feel even worse about the situation where, you know, she talked about how people had actually looked toward him for hope and faith, and he just kind of shut them down, and he, he was a coward, essentially. He just, you know, hid himself in the church. And a little bit later in the episode, um, it was it was subtle and it was a small thing, but we did see him take his collar off, um, and that was it was definitely a sign. It was definitely either him, uh, you know, losing faith, or it was him realizing that, or, or you know, him assuming that maybe you know God isn't the only path that's going to lead him to a certain place. Maybe he has to be strong for himself or whatever it is. Definitely. Um, and that was I, d- I think that was a big thing in the episode too. But that storm definitely made him realize that maybe he made a mistake. <laughs> that was a huge storm, dude. What I don't understand is how the barn was left untouched. Yeah, that was crazy. So we had walkers and trees. We had trees in walkers. <laughs> you saw that one walker's arm? That thing was just done. Broken we, in three places. We had walkers bad. on walkers on walkers. <laughs> walkers on deck. We had, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. So what do you guys think it was? Was it just like... Hurricane. I, yeah, Natural disaster. Yeah, I do think it was. And, you know, another funny thing to tie back into the priest, I, I do think that he, you know, we didn't really see him after the storm happened, but I feel like, you know, once he had seen that, he probably assumed, like, wow, this is a miracle. This is an act of God that, you know, we are untouched and every single thing outside of us is just destroyed. And we were almost saved, actually, by the storm because none of the zombies were able to get yeah. in after that. So that he, you know, even, even when it started raining, you know, he said, forgive me, Father, I believe were the words he said and um maybe maybe he didn't fully lose faith yeah and it's like back to what denzel's saying like obviously you know every character serves a purpose and everything happens for a reason if daryl never went out to have that to take that cigarette um never known about the barn he would have never known about the barn they would have been stuck in the rain they were they would have been in a tree or a tree would have been in them <laughs> yeah or, or a walker in them i don't know <laughs> um just going back um to aaron and him knowing a little bit about the group. I'm thinking the only thing I can think of now is that maybe Morgan has something to do with the group that he's in. Ooh. And that map that he found that the New World needs Rick Grimes could have possibly helped him know who Rick was. Ooh. Could be wrong. But how else would he know his name? Yeah. How else would he know his name? I mean, we can go to Brandon's, you know, thought on Unless micro just... micro microphones or microphones, something like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Micro microphones microphone? everywhere. He's definitely <laughs> hidden little nano microphones on nano, every person there you and go. listens into them. Yeah, I, I don't think, know. I think yeah. if Morgan was with the group, that'd be awesome. But I, I still think they were just kind of spying on him. But actually, now that I think about that, so if they were running surveillance on them, you know, that kind of br- bringing it to the conversation of well, are they good or are they bad? 
you know, if they're bad, whatever they wanted from them when they've already done it. You know, exactly. It seems like they're already multiple steps ahead of them as far as the water and the road and all that other stuff. So if they really were out to get them, you know, eat Snipers. them, whatever it is that they wanted to do, wouldn't they've already done it? I sure. do think that they, I feel like they're, they, you know, we touched upon it earlier, are probably trying to recruit them. They see that these people are, could be valuable assets and they have gone through so much so far, especially if they're, if they're you know, doing surveillance, they've seen some of the things they've gone through. And they've seen that they're pretty strong. You know, maybe this one episode wasn't a good highlight of that because some of them were giving up. But essentially, throughout the you know the entire, all the seasons that we've seen so far, they are strong people. I think I've lost faith in every like in any other group they meet. Like I know you guys are saying this could be good, this could be good. It probably is. But going into, you know, going into meeting another group or anyone else in the show. I just feel like they have they they will always have bad intentions and you have to have that mindset. It's scary. You have to prepare for the worst. And I just it doesn't excite me to find it does, but it doesn't really excite me as much to see other people join and, you know, interact with the group. Because I just feel like okay, what's going to happen next? Who are we going to lose? Who's going to get hurt? Right. I'm sort of on the fence with that. I mean, yeah, like with anyone you come in contact with you're gonna you want to think the worst at this point and you kind of have no choice but i think with all these characters that we've been losing so far i feel like in a way you can look at it as them just making room for more people to come in you know because you can't have a million characters just all over the place you have to yeah. sort of make way for new ones absolutely so well, progression yeah, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right so yeah like this episode was this episode was a great episode. Uh, we touched on some pretty good topics. And what do you guys think? What do you guys think is going to happen next? Oh, hi. Oh, oh, I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. That's what you think? That what language the, was that? Those little, um, that was excitement. Those, those, oh. those few seconds, oh. <laughs> those few seconds of the preview, I, I can't wait for the next episode. It looks bang a -lang Well, we see that they have a car because, you know, was it Rick and Glenn in the car? And he was like, oh, we were in a trap. But we, he has a car, so they, they got to something. They got, they the got somewhere that's established, you know? So I think that's something good. Yeah, so overall, I think this was a great episode. Um, some amazing content. I'm super excited for next week. Uh, I'm also super excited for next week because we are going to Walker Stalker Con Chicago. Woo! It's going to be me, Man. Sam, um, David, who's our audio guy. He's really don't hear him, but he's, he's somewhere. Um, <laughs> I want to do a few shout-outs before we get off the air here. Uh, Jared Thompson, who plays Officer Tanaka, he followed us on Twitter, so he's definitely given us some support. Thank you. Also, a shout out to Walker Nation. I reached out to them previously this week, and we're gonna we're gonna meet up at Walker Stalker, which is really cool. Also, to Denzel's girlfriend Gemini, she sat here quietly eating her pizza, drinking some beer. Good job, good job. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, this is Orlando, and I am Brandon. And Denzel. This is Sam. And keep it vibing.